and welcome to Skits and Quibbles. It's Precocious Lotus here, or Dr. Audrey Tang, if you check out Mental Health Matters at 8 a.m. PST on a Thursday. Tonight, it's another episode of our Spotlight series, and we have got poet, speaker, and the 11th Bard of Northamptonshire, Kezabel Ambler, joining us to give us a presentation of her work, but also talk to us about the work she does when it comes to the mental health sphere. But before that, Please join me on the main stage. So what burlesque move have I got today? I thought I would teach you how to walk. Now we all think we know how to walk, we just put one foot in front of the other. Not quite the same on the burlesque stage. What we need to do is present. And so I'm going to show you a number of walks, but only one this week, which means you do have to keep tuning in in all of our Skits and Quibbles Spotlight episodes. This is the cross the stage sidewalk. And what you do here is you keep your body facing the front because that way you get the full effect of your costume and the audience gets to enjoy your face and your body. And you walk pointing one leg out to the side and cross the other leg in front. The leg out to the side and cross the other leg in front. And that way you are always staying facing your audience. Of course that may not work in every single presentation or dance that you're doing, but that is just one way of crossing the stage when it comes to burlesque. So if you are warmed up, it is my absolute delight and privilege to present to you the 11th Bard of Northamptonshire, Kezabel Ambler, presenting her work. Permission to speak. We all have a story. Questions, intentions, desires, a wish. Family memories, love, realities, anguish. Conversations buried, suppressed needs to express, to declare our truth, to process and address. Creative expressions may start with a brushstroke, a whisper, a written word. Sing out your life dance. Now is the time to be heard. Let's voice our observations and feelings. Drown out that inner critique. Truly bless and give ourselves full permission to speak. I love that title. Permission to speak and you have another one, permission to love yourself. Um, why is that concept of permission so, so important? Well, quite often, um, well, I, as a little girl, I was very shy, painfully shy. And um, I wrote a poem when I was 12 and a half and the teacher put A plus. And you think, wonderful. But then she crossed it out and put, is this all your own work? And didn't believe I'd written it. Oh no! So I didn't write another poem for over 30 years. That's and then I finally thing. found my voice. And so I am passionate about giving people permission to find their voice and to tell their story. And so this permission to speak, it was me starting to tell my story. And actually starting to stick up for myself and go, actually no. Mm. And then actually yes. And when I go into the mental health wards and in Johnny's Happy Place or in festivals, it's, it's giving people that voice, giving them permission to speak. Absolutely. And that is such a heartbreaking start. And I don't mm. think we realise mm. sometimes how much our behaviours can really impact others, especially in such a, an important position as yes. teaching. Yes. Um, but you clearly were able to process and work through. Now you've written mm. five books. Yes. yes. I, I mean... What inspires you in terms of each book? Well, how I started was um, literally my marriage of 31 years was wobbly. And I, I wrote, I don't know what to do, I don't know where I'm heading, and I wrote a sort of poem, and it was so revealing to myself that I hid it. And so it is in the book, Permission to Speak. It's called Complicated Love, the Hidden Poem. And that was the beginning of my writing journey as an adult. Wow. That was the beginning. And you've really put your finger on to what poetry or writing in general can do for us. It allows us to express so much. And Absolutely. that, I guess, lack of outlet seems to have been what brought you there. And, and there's so many people are creative, mm. um, and they'll, but they'll, when they come to my workshops or when I chat with them in the mental health ward, they'll say, oh, 
I haven't written since I was at school, or I haven't painted since I was at school, or I run retreats as well. And they'll say, oh, I, you know, I can't, I can't dance, I can't paint, I can't write. There's that I can't mantra. Mm. And actually we all can, yeah. but we often compare ourselves to yeah. others. That's the issue. Yes, yes. And as adults, we start thinking, I must be perfect at this. Yes. And we're actually yeah. not if we haven't had the time or the even the ability to to mm. practice in that particular way I love that <laughs> I mean this comes to your weaving words creative writing workshops which are fabulous to attend you bring so many people out of their shells please yes. please tell me about them well basically it started when um, I started writing and I was going when I was performing um, I, I was performing in Corby at the Cube and there was Kay Tempest there yes and they did a workshop and I kept going to more and more workshops. And the more I learned, it was change in my life. And I thought, I want to share this. So it literally, my Weaving Words workshop started with six to eight people round my dining room table with homemade flapjack and a six week course. And at the end of the six weeks, no one wanted to leave. And some of them are still coming to this day, eight years on. And so it was just that beginning of wanting to share all the wonderful things that I had learned or enjoyed or that had changed the direction of my life. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And, and with that, what sorts of people attend these workshops? It can be absolutely anyone. anyone. I know it's open anyone. to everyone. Yep. But any age, any background. Um, I've literally worked with people who can't read and write and we scribe for them. Wow. And, I, you know, I've worked with blind, I've worked with um, stroppy people who don't want to be there and I literally say to them you don't have to come back but all I ask is please keep writing you know that when I say that pen can be a tool for life it literally can just by journaling each morning you know that early morning pages or just just scribbling and actually a lot of people struggle with the word write if they're dyslexic yes. or if they were told they were rubbish at school so I often say just scribble just yeah. scribble your thoughts yeah that's the beginning, It's that foundation. so freeing, isn't yeah. it, when you get something yeah. out there. Do you yeah. have, in both of these books, I'd love to show them if that's okay to the, the camera, these are just two of the many books that um, Kezabel's written. Do you have any particular favourites in either of these two? I do. Oh, <laughs> go on, I guess, like, ask me who your favourite child is, I know. isn't it? <laughs> it is hard, actually. Um, yeah, th there's one that I'm often asked for, and it's a little bit cheeky. And it's called Retro Afro Muff. And it's a little bit saucy. Uh, and it started with a conversation of why each day women wake up feeling imperfect if they're not smooth. And all the adverts come on the telly. And so to depilate or not to depilate, that is the question, is how it starts. And so it's a slight Mickey tape with a Shakespeare twist. But also saying, why do we need to look like 12-year-olds or porn stars? Yeah. And, and it's so people are laughing but also at the end of it, they're going, actually, what are we doing? Yes. Why is that? So that's one of my favorites because it makes people laugh, but it also moves them. You see, that's another beautiful thing about poetry because yeah. it's so self-expressive, but mm. you're able to start conversations as well. Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, I know you're going to be telling us a little bit about your next poem, I Will Not Be Buried. Mm. What, have there been conversations that that poem in particular has inspired or conversations that's come out of your, your performances? The um, I Will Not Be Buried was inspired by a Mexican proverb. They tried to bury me, but didn't know I am a seed. Love, and love, I was love, working love. with um, some uh, nine and ten year olds and we were at Boughton House Gardens and I was trying to encourage them and we, there was herb gardens and different things and some of them were a little bit like it's a herb garden um, but so what I did was made nettle soup so they tasted the herbs mm. and I made stuff in and I thought they, well it doesn't come out of a packet and just just to make it more of an experience mm -hmm. of all the five senses, which is what a lot of what I try and encourage in people's writing. Yes. And so that I will not be buried um, was that either, even with our tears, we're watering that seed and we're going to grow despite oh. it all. Well, it's, I'd love to hand it over to Kezabel Ambler with I will not be buried. I will not be buried. Muck shoveled and thrown, eyes flinched closed, I inhale the earthy smell. Try to turn my mind to digging, planting fond memories of gardening and fresh air. It helps me smile inside. 
Another spadeful flies my way. I shake the dirt from my hair. I don't care. It will not deter me from my path. I'm heading towards warmth and sunshine. I will not be buried. Turn my cheek to the mudslingers. Steer away from negative cold stones and choking weeds. Weather beaten and windswept hope seeds rise steadily, watered with fresh tears and rain. Light radiates. I stand tall alongside unique creative beauties, sharing the sweet scented fruits for all. Cultivated happiness and love grows, soaked in music, dance, art and words in a full and fertile Narnian Eden. So with that poem, and that's a, such a great way of connecting with other people mm -hmm. in terms of the, um, the nettle soup and getting yeah, people yeah. interested in, in the words that you're using. Why is poetry so meaningful to you, using poetry maybe rather than prose? Um, often when I'm encouraging people to write, sometimes to say I is quite hard. But if you say she... It just distances you enough to be allowed to spill that. So when you're writing a poem, um, some, I mean, this, that poem is called I Will Not Be Buried. And at the end, you know, the muck shoveled and thrown and the, the difficult time, it was January, and I remember it was a difficult time. But at the end, it talks about together we can do this. And, you know, we're all creatives. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't know that yet... Um, we can paint and laugh and when people say I can't paint I put a brush in their hand we put their favourite music on and we splosh and, that, and they love it and I say now you can do what you like with that you can throw that away you don't have to throw it to anyone but actually you'll never forget just dancing and splashing and mm. that piece of art and you are an artist and, so it's, and sometimes we weave words into art so I open um, at the John Bunyan Centre in Bedford. Yes. We had uh, I opened with a poem, and some of the words we wrote on ticker tape and ribbon, oh. and literally wove their words into a piece of art. Oh my goodness! So you could just play. Yes, and yeah. and it's almost easier to play when you've got something that perhaps doesn't, you know, with written stories and prose, it feels a bit. Structure. There's an expectation. It's a, yes. Or that, uh, there's something at the end. Yes. And so when I say there's an empty page, you can write anything. anything. There's no wrong to write. It's actually, sometimes people cry because that's the first time they're allowed to just be themselves. Sometimes oh. people are a little bit, oh, it's a huge, massive page. And, oh. um, and I'll say, you can write anything. You can write, Kezabel talks too much. You can write, my knickers are uncomfortable. You can write, what am I having for tea tonight? Anything just to get the pen flowing. And by the end of the page, some real stuff comes out. Yes. Sometimes you're like, oh, you didn't even know that was in your mind. Yes. That's the power. It, that's incredible, which kind of links to my next question. It's, it is such a great way to express some of those deeper things which yeah. you perhaps haven't even realised you're struggling with. Yes. Have you seen that happen in your practice? I mean, you work Absolutely. a lot with mental health, so... Absolutely. And there was a young girl in the mental health ward who was self-harming. Mm. And she came to a session and that night, instead of cutting, was writing and got the same release. Oh so it's powerful. And actually, even more so, the spoken word. You know, when we, that self-critic, you stub your toe and idiot and whatever, you know, all that, those little mantras. Um, it's powerful what you speak. We have to be really careful what we speak. I think that's very true, actually. Mm, mm. I, and I don't think we realise that until somebody tells us and yes. reminds us. And I think yeah. that's another reason why your workshops are so helpful, because those little nuggets yes. of wisdom yeah. come in. Now, as well as your workshops, as well as your writing, you are a performance poet. I am. Which yes. is, it means you're commissioned to write and perform your poetry, yes, which is which is absolutely right. wonderful. And other people might say to you, could you write a poem about this particular thing? Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about those opportunities that may be open to new writers who are thinking, well, I don't know how to start. I've, I've got these ideas. But. So ev everyone's got a story, as the poem says. Everyone's got a story. And so really, it is just starting. So um, 
you can get editors to help you, you can get Kezabels to help you, whatever. Um, it is just about starting. But if I'm commissioned for a piece, and um, so I write poems for funerals, for weddings, for events, I get as much information as possible, as much information as possible. And um, it's the same with when I'm um, helping people to write, I'll ask them to do that free writing. Yes. And then once they've done that, then we can go on to the topic or the commission or the what they actually want to write. Uh, uh, you know, once they've got rid of the busyness yes. in their head, yes. no distractions. Yeah. But actually, quite often the power is in the piece that they were free writing. And you just highlight some key words. And before you know it, you've got the foundation of a piece mm. without even hardly trying. Absolutely mm. incredible. And it, you are really putting across how powerful this whole process yeah. can be yeah. and how therapeutic. And that brings me back to your Weaving Words workshops. And your next poem is about weaving words. Can you tell me a little bit about that, please? Well, um, the Weaving Words came from um, going, to a, going to a workshop. I enjoyed it. And we ripped up bits out of a newspaper and we took a line and we ran with it. And that's where it came from originally. Um, and what we did, the Weaving Words Experience is an app we're making. And we've done five days filming in between lockdowns and editing and putting it together. The idea being that sometimes people can come to the workshop, sometimes they can't. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and we're on Zoom as well. But So to have that app, so if you're a little bit fed up or a bit down, you've got my cheeky face um, encouraging you. Um, there's 20 different workshops. And so there's something you can watch and then pause and write mm -hmm. if you need a little inspiration or yes. an uplift or an affirmation yes. or whatever. Yeah. That's very important. Just before I know we're going to hear you perform in a moment. But with that, I think sometimes you get a situation where you sit down and go, right, I, I need to write, yeah. <laughs> but I can't. And, and just having the yeah. permission yeah. to get that little prompt and that little encouragement from somebody yes. else is yeah. so important. And actually the prompt might not be what you really want to write about, True. but it just gets you flowing. Mm. And I've pulled over in the car and written, I've got in and out of a swimming pool and written. Uh, oh, the poem yeah. Three Wishes came as I was swimming. And I had to keep jumping out and writing on a little scrap of paper. I think it was the, the, the receipt from the pool. And scribbling the ideas and things. But, oh. So I always say, take a little pad and pen with you everywhere. And some of the kids that have come to my workshops, their parents get in touch with me and say, my daughter takes a pad with her everywhere. I was dressed as a mermaid for Felix Stowe Literary Festival. And we had a little beach hut and oh. we were scribbling and Brilliant. painting. And this little girl saw my book and she said, I want to do a book like that. And I said, yep, you can. And she's been writing ever since. Amazing. But that's, there's more than about the writing. You're observing mm. how you feel, who affects you, what affects you. I feel miserable today. They've really annoyed me today. That is beautiful today. That made me laugh today. It's just recognising what's affecting you. That's the power too. That's all about connectivity. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Here's Kezabel performing a Weaving Words experience. A Weaving Words experience. I'd love to encourage and inspire you to express your creativity. You're worth some quality time and space to spill your words. Feel free to be. All you need is a clear page or your favourite device. A safe place to empty your mind and let your pen become a tool for life. Inhale nature. Art, music and memories start by scribbling. Just let go. No comparisons to others. No wrong or right. Allowed to flow. It's your time to tell your story. Let your thoughts and imaginings take flight. Enjoy a Weaving Words experience and simply watch, pause and write. What have been the highs and lows of your career? Because there must have been ups and downs as there well. There have. Um, I would say well, one of the lows, I, I don't see it as a low, I, I, more of a challenge really, Okay. was when I went freelance. Right. So, you know, the, you don't always get paid a lot for yeah. writing a poem yeah. or, or sometimes you get paid a fortune. Yeah. You know, I was commissioned um, to write for World um, Poetry Day and Women's International mm. Month. And it was 300 pounds mm. for 35 words. It's like, that's crazy. But actually, there's other times where you don't. Uh, when I went freelance, um, it came from, 
I was being painted by artists to, to earn a little cash and to meditate because you have to sit still and I'm a chatterbox. So I was dressed as a fisherman and I had this fishing rod and a hat and these boots and the artists were painting me and I had this, uh, would you call it a vision? I don't know what it was. I saw myself dancing with these fish and I was a mermaid and I was an angel and I was a fairy. This was in my meditation being very still, holding a fishing rod. And then my eyes were blinking and then I was like a lighthouse and I was trying to save these fish from the rocks. And I felt these words as important work to be done. And I came out of this meditation holding this fishing rod, 14 artists with tears streaming down my face. And they were looking at me like, what the? <laughs> you know, uh, but then I went freelance because it's we. Yeah, how much time have we got? Yeah. I want to bless as many people who, who cross my path. Oh. And I know it, it saves lives. I've had people ring me two years after an event, after a performance, saying, do you remember me? I bought your book and you talked to me and encouraged me. And I say, oh, yeah, I remember you. Mm. He said, that night I had everything in my car to take my life. Mm. I had the rope, I had everything. Oh, he said, gosh. you made me laugh, you listened, you encouraged me. And I didn't, and here I am running a business. And You've touched on something so important there, you've listened. And there is something about when yeah. you perform something, when you speak something in poetry, yeah. a song as well, people listen. And you're connecting. Yes. So when I do my full one-woman show, mm. we laugh, we cry, there's a little bit of naughty mischief and sauce, and there's all the emotions, mm. and that connection is beautiful. Mm. It's absolutely beautiful. That's... That's the power of it. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's the power of humanity as much as anything yes, else as well. absolutely. And with relating to that, all of your poems, at least the ones you performed, mm -hmm. and, and many of the ones I've read are very uplifting. Mm -hmm. And But you are processing some mm -hmm. very difficult emotions yes. as well. Is, is yeah. that a deliberate choice or is that just something that's come out of the writing? Well, some of it is observational, as I said. Some of it is reflection. Some of it is learning. Some of it is ranting. Some of yeah. it is like, you know, <laughs> sweary, ranting, yeah. you know, and some of it is just comical. And um, there was one poem I wrote called Zip It, and it's a really short poem. And most people think it's quite funny, you know, verbals like gerbils safely stored in my cheeks. And you're, try you're dying to say something, but you mustn't, and you keep it zipped. And it's funny, but actually it was written at a time where if I did speak up, it could have affected someone's life really badly wow so I held on to the words to make sure they were safe you know oh so the power goodness, of yes. words and you know like I say I, I talk a lot but the power of sometimes just like you say stepping back and holding those words so a real mix <laughs> Amazing. I mean, now you were saying about going freelance, and that is yeah. something that a lot of creatives either are doing or want to do. Yeah. Is there anything that you wish someone had maybe told you or helped you with when you were first starting out? Uh, patience. Right. Yep. And yep. also <laughs> being really aware and um, of who you're working with. Mm. Because actually, at the beginning, you just you, if you're not careful, you're just like, oh yeah, I'll do that. And actually, I think um, sometimes it's important to just trust that gut instinct, God instinct thing going on. So one of my books is called When You Say Yes, and so <laughs> that was really powerful. You know, would you like to paint the bottom of a boat? Yes. And the experience that I had was dirty and it was interesting, but not interesting. But, but actually, if I had never done that, I wouldn't have ended up under a watering can of heated water from a fire, having a shower. And those sort of experiences that then became a poem. Mm. So, but also, um, in my latter years, I'm learning to say no. And that's what I would pass on mm. to the beginner mm. or the new writer or the new creative. Um, who do you really want to work with? Yes. And mm. what opportunities yes. are there open to you? Because yeah. so much is done for free, actually, to start yes. with, because you have to say yes to a lot of yes. things. Um, and for experience as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then I think it does get to, well, what am I gaining yes. from this? Yes. And what can I afford to still do, That's really? Right. Yeah. No, very, very important. Um, and with sort of linked to that, um, what key advice would you give to somebody who was starting as a performance poet? So they, so I know you're saying about um, 
somebody who's who's considering this as freelance and so on, but who maybe just doesn't even know where to start. Mm. But they can write. They know yes. that. They know that. Do you know, in most towns there's a community. Mm. And, um, and there's open mics. Of course. So, I mean, there was occasion, you know, when I started 14 years ago, where I went into an open mic and they said, oh, we're going to stop the music now and Kezabel is going to do some poetry. And there were these two big builders there and they were like effing and blinding, effing poetry like this. And I remember thinking, they were really not impressed. They turned their back and they were oh, like this. So I did a little saucy poem and they turned around and the bloke said to his mate, can she say that? And then I did some deep and moving poems that actually this guy came up to me afterwards and he was towering over me. He said, I effing hate poetry, but I like what you do. <laughs> and so, you know, that was an open mic. But actually that year of open mics um, helped me to learn when to slow down, what works, what doesn't work, what order to do things and timings and taught me a lot and listening to other people's work as well. Yes, very much so. Yeah. And I think we yeah. sometimes undervalue the what what these kinds of experiences can yes. give us because yes. they're all learning experiences. Absolutely. Even if they in themselves don't lead to a commission or something like yes. that. What you're gaining from that. Huge. Yeah. Huge. So that's throwing yourself out there. I mean, really the very first performance performance I did, I was writing just to work my stuff out. And my friend said, do you want to perform between burlesque and belly dancing to fill whilst we change? And I just said, yes. And, and I stood on the stage of Northampton Playhouse Theatre. The paper was shaking. My right leg was shaking. Uh, it was an incredible experience. You could only see the front row because of the lighting. Thank you, Lord. And, but people asked afterwards, have you got a book? Mm. We love your stuff. I didn't. I had a year of open mics and learning and getting it together. Yes. Self-published a little booklet called Truly Me that they loved. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's where it started. And that's where you refined a lot of the skills. Yeah. Yes, fantastic. Mm. Now with that, because you do tackle a lot of difficult subjects mm. and you also contain the anxieties of other people in your yeah. workshops and so on, what do you do for your own well-being? Music is huge for me. Music. I couldn't go a day without music. So I do have a little dance in the kitchen, and I encourage you to do have a little dance in the kitchen. Um, swimming, I swim at least a couple of times a week. I jump in lakes and rivers and the sea and do some wild swimming as well. And that time of just, mm. for me, no phone, some prayerful time, some tears, some laughter, some ooh, naughty thoughts, and whatever's <laughs> going on in life, life's rich tapestry. Love it. Um, and art, I splosh a bit of art. Um, and I say splosh because... It's not like, oh, I'm a fine artist and I, yeah. you know, I just enjoy it, yeah. you know, and nature. I love being in nature and I run some little half day retreats. I recently moved into a house called Forget Me Not. And so I run Forget Me Not days and people come and have a bespoke day to whatever they need oh. that day. So it might be splashing paint, it might be writing, it might be having homemade soup, it might be you know, lying in the field, you know, meditating mm. or just dancing like crazy or popping candy or whatever they need Amazing. that day. So those little, and I also we're running a, um, a festival in July so people can come. It's an alcohol-free festival with Vikings, with spoken word. Fabulous. With live music, all different sorts of music. And people can come and perform. There's a busk stop room. Where I you love can it. Come and perform <laughs> your poem, your piece, whatever. And and the retreat side of things, you know, give yourself that time. Yeah. Even if you do your own little retreat, We've, I'm running one on the outskirts of Paris in at the end of August, um, wow. 24. Yeah, and we'll be writing, we'll be meditating, we'll be doing just eating beautiful food yes. and. Um, going for walks in the the vineyards. It's in the vi um, Champagne Amazing. region. Oh, and, but this all came from saying yes to going to Wales for a Compassionate Mental Health Week, where people came from all over the world to show different ways of mental health rather than just locking up and filling full of meds. Yes. And that's where I met the lady who lives on the outskirts of Paris, Denise. It's and amazing. It's about keep, yeah. you keep it open to experiences, yes. don't you? I think that's what, a lot of what creativity does for yeah. you. Well, <laughs> to our viewers, we are going to put our star through our great dream challenge. So that's coming up next. 
Isabel, this is the Great Dream Challenge. Ah. And we give all of our guest stars <laughs> this particular challenge. It is the 10 Keys to Happier Living from Action for Happiness. Okay. And the challenge is, I'm going to take you through all of those different keys and you tell me what you've been doing recently or are about to do that fulfill those particular okay, areas of well-being. Cool. And you have a minute to do it in. And we have a pretty decent leaderboard going at the moment. So. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Where are our poets? Um, one poet has got as far as A, so that, but one of our other poets has, has actually managed to complete it. So, you know, that's our poets at the moment. Right. Are you ready? <laughs> Giving. My time, my love, my energy. Relating. Um, connecting with the audiences. Exercising. Swimming last week. Awareness. Uh, aware of my thoughts and feelings and passing that on. Trying out something new. Always. <laughs> Every day. Brilliant. Direction, having goals to look forward to. Yeah, sorting this app, sorting out the year, yeah. Resilience, how you've bounced back. Oh gosh, after my mum passed, huge, and I have. Uh, emotions, looking for what's good in the universal people. In people, yeah, I'm always feeling those emotions and looking for those emotions. Acceptance of yourself. Yes, that's a learning curve, but at 62, I'm, I'm getting there. And meaning being part of something bigger. Oh, I'm loving being part of this festival that we're running, Freestone Fest. Amazing. Look at that. Still got time. So clearly it's our poets that seem to be coming <laughs> quite near the top of the leaderboard. It's because we're thinking and feeling and noticing. Yeah, I think you're probably right, we're actually. Noticing. I wonder if that connects to well-being mm. better. So yeah. we've got our three at the top there. Huzzah! And there you go, <laughs> joining the top level. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs>
familiar rhythm as I prayerfully swim. Breathing out. Breathing in. The emotions spill but no one sees. Wet eyes reflecting gratefully. Troubled waters struggling out to sea as I prayerfully swim. Breathing out. Breathing in. Fluid thoughts for my day, guidance asked as I pray. Distracting imaginings lead me astray as I prayerfully swim. Breathing out and breathing in. Blessing friends and family with devotions. Passing through life's mixed commotions. Head down, dive deep within God's oceans as I prayerfully swim, breathing out, breathing in. Creative pictures, tumbling flow, mind releases, letting go, rainbow words escape and grow. Time out, swim, to prayerfully grin, breathing out, breathing in, arms stretched wide floating on my back. Sunset, swim memories, blissfully stack. Exhilarating rivers and seashores lapped. Diverse experiences of past mermaiding, breathing me out. Breathing me 